works uh, portfolio thing there. Definitely have loud trucks. Oh, Jesus. Did I just get that correct? <laughs> oh, my God. How the hell did I do that? Damn it. You know, I was supposed to be moving, but... I think I need an even bigger slap across the face other than buying a uh, Core 2 Duo MacBook Pro. So there was another yard sale by donation and I couldn't help myself but to get stuff there, of course. I mean, I got a bit of a disease for old computers. What did you expect? So mainly the reason, I don't really care about those speakers, so don't comment about it. The reason why I was actually looking towards getting some of the stuff was because this is an old computer that has a little bit of nostalgic value to me. Just for the sake of, I remember seeing this in the younger kids' classroom. I never personally used something like this, thank God, but still. And then another motivating factor is this HP. It's an HP Pavilion 522C. We're probably gonna take a look at that one first. Got the original CRT with it, which is pretty cool. Manufactured December 2001 in that CRT's case. So, I guess without further ado, I'm gonna go grab some power cables and we'll get a bit of a test jig going. See if that HP or any of these things actually for that matter, well, I know for this one, it's not gonna be turned on in this video, but any of these three, we'll see if any of these three will actually work. All right, so we got a bit of a setup. Don't mind the mess. Of course, we're moving, so it's kind of expected. For sound, I'm just gonna use my Bluetooth speaker with the aux input, nothing fancy, so. First things first, to determine if I need to go grab another monitor, let's check the CRT, and let's see if this thing powers on. Yep, I saw a light flash there for a second. Don't know if I'm gonna keep this monitor, but hey. All right, it's orange. So let's go ahead and uh, let's plug in the computer of one of three. If I can even keep a hold of the power cord. Damn it, of course. I haven't even powered the computer on and I gotta take a take two into account. All right, so far so good. CRT lights up. What do we got? It's booting into something. Come on, show me something good. Uh, I got a feeling either something's up with this monitor or yeah. I bet you this thing is no good. Doesn't look to be displaying anything on the on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> I think this thing is probably toast. Well that sucks. Alright. I'm gonna go grab another monitor then. And we'll hook it up and we'll uh Yeah. Well, I was expecting that to be the case. Oh well. You win some, you lose some. Alright, take three, this time with a monitor attached. That actually works. Power on. Turn that on. One thing I just noticed is somebody taped up this <laughs> the power light on the power supply. I found that hilarious. I go ahead and turn the thing off because I didn't want to see what was on it when I plugged in the monitor. So now this is going to be the actual take one, but take three. Assuming the DVI on that video card actually works. And it appears like it does. What's a boot into? Yeah, it boots into Windows XP. I guess it's no surprise because on the front of the case it has design for Windows XP. And I have a feeling that this computer was made sometime in very late 2001 or very early 2002 as the rebate sticker on the front mentions Office XP. And that was not a very long lived version of Office. It was quickly replaced by 2003 if I remember correctly. We got a login from Molly, and uh, let's see. We have no password. I'm just gonna go and aim the camera away real quick, see if anything graphic comes up on the screen. I don't 
No, I don't think so, but you never know with a machine like this. Well, they certainly left the sound all the way up. Jesus. All right, I'll be back. It looks like it's going to take a few minutes to log in. Okay, I don't think I'm going to get dinged too hard for having the Grinch uh, on my wallpaper here. Whatever they were doing with this thing, they had the MSN installer, they had some form of Flash Player installer. They definitely have it updated to at least Internet Explorer 7 right there on the desktop. Otherwise, it just looks like they have the uh, classic theme installed. They have the good old works uh, portfolio thing there. Definitely have loud trucks. We also have a classic, classic version of a vast antivirus. Look at that. I haven't seen that in ages. Remember when Avast had that blue circle with the like the serif A font in it as their logo? That was like a long, long time ago. It has to be like Avast version 4 or something like that. And as per usual, I have a USB mouse and it doesn't know what the hell it is. So looks like I'm going to be waiting for my mouse driver to load. Typical Windows XP. Oh, as I'm speaking of it, guess what popped up there? right there? USB device. What a quinky dink. Anyway. Oh, damn it, I just missed it. It said, no firewall is on. Well, that's safe. <laughs> Probably because uh, the Avast one hadn't initialized yet. Well, it wants to install a driver for a plug-and-play monitor, so that's useful. Just for funsies, let's see if this eject button actually does anything. Nope. Eh. Figures. See if any of these actually open up here. Well, that one does. That one does. Cool. That's a score. Two opening optical drives. Well, unfortunately, this has the classic start menu, so it looks like I'm going to have to go through this the old fashioned way of going through the control panel. Not like it's going to be that quick anyway. And, oh, why did you set the stupid layout like that? Who did this? Why would you do this? That is terrible. Anyway. Uh, system. All right, we got XP Service Pack 3. We have 256 megs of RAM. And on top of that, we have an Athlon XP 2000 Plus at 1.66 gigahertz. All right, let's uh, head to Device Manager here. Let's see what we got for uh, a video card, because... It's got some kind of ATI video card in it. I have no idea what, so your guess is going to be as good as mine as to what this is. A Radeon 8500. Not bad. Not bad. At least for the time, it would have been pretty decent. Um, might have to... Let's see, Windows key D, right-click button, properties, and kind of make my way around Windows with a keyboard. Oh god, it's so slow. <laughs> the 256 megs of memory is definitely not helping. Um, at least found my monitor, so I'll give it that. What do we got? It's probably a 128 meg video card. I don't know about you, that's my guess. Let's find out. A 64 megabyte video card. Eh, that was a good guess. I was kind of optimistic, but oh well. Alrighty then. Well, that's pretty much that for the uh, HP. It's got a bunch of classic software on it. Bell Arc Advisor. Nice. Uh, ETI Multimedia Center. Interesting. One thing I do want to check, how big is the hard drive? I would take it between... Uh, looks like it's a 60 gig hard drive. Not bad. That's actually quite surprising for a machine like this to have a hard drive that big. I would have figured a 40 gig. It's even got the uh, HP recovery on it. That's fascinating. I actually wonder, is that something I can access? I can. I still don't have my mouse driver. How annoying is that? Why did it not pick my mouse up? It seems to all still be there. Including the uh, warning logo that says, don't alter these files. Hmm, fascinating. I will come back to that in a later video, but for right now, and for the sake of this video so it doesn't drag on, we're gonna go and shut this computer down, and we're gonna take a look at probably the 
IBM Net Vista sitting over there on the carpet. I think that's the next system I want to take a look at. I want to save the probably the most nostalgic one or the most sentimental one, probably the most nostalgic one for me anyway, for last. God, I was wondering when it was going to play the lock on sound. <laughs> Oh, I guess the first thing this thing's gonna get if I ever do anything with it is a RAM upgrade, because, uh, 256 megs of memory, guys. Perfect for Windows XP. Okay, so apparently I found that, uh, the hard drive's missing, because these two brackets were in there. So that's fascinating. Not to be surprised, though, because they probably did at least take the hard drive out of one of these things. And I guess this was it. It's also got no... RAM in it. It looks as if it takes DDR1, so not too bad, I suppose. This is probably a Socket 478 Pentium 4 of some kind, if I had to take a guess. It's got AGP and three PCI slots, and uh, it's got a system fan header over here and a business audio integrated speaker. It's got a chassis fan over here, and it looks as if the optical drive in this case, which is not original, it was manufactured in August 2002, but I have a feeling this computer probably came out in 2003 or 2004. It does have all of the labels on it underneath the case, but of course it's sitting down right now. It's got the, the model number here. It's an 8305-81U, and there's the serial number, KCW2GGM. So if anybody wants to look those up, feel free to because I'm gonna go ahead and put the case back on and move on to the next one because I don't feel like tearing apart other systems right now. All right, last system, at least out of the four that I have, because this one, the CPU cooler is falling off of the uh, CPU mount and uh, <laughs> I don't want to turn it on with that being the case and burn the CPU up. It's nothing fancy, it's just a socket AM2 system, but it is what it is, so anyway. This one here, I'm the most interested in taking a look at because I have no idea what's on it, if they even still have a hard drive in here to begin with. This used to be at the private school that I used to be at when I was in seventh and eighth grade, and this was in the younger kids' classroom. I believe it's probably gonna be some kind of socket 478 system if I had to take a guess, but I don't know, and I have no idea what's left, so we're about to find out. Doesn't look like it's turned on, so that's a good thing. Yeah, that's the only reason why I grabbed this is because of this plaque showing the property of that uh, particular school. So anyway, bottoms up. Let's see. I heard a beep, a very long beep, so. My guess is there's no RAM once again. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go grab a screwdriver so we can take the side panel off and we'll uh, take a closer look. Okay, presto, screwdriver in hand. So let's go ahead and uh, let's see what's in this thing here. So if it doesn't have RAM, then it's probably a good bet that this is not gonna have a hard drive in it. Oh, there is a baffle in the case. Okay, fair enough then. Oh, it does have a hard drive. No shit. Well, how about that? Uh, I need to connect it then. As for the motherboard, oh, this looks like AMD socket A, baby. That's exactly what that looks like. And that has DDR RAM slots as well. Okay. Well, I know I'm going to sound like a bit of a hypocrite and not wanting to grab parts for these things, but legitimately I am curious about this one. So I'm going to go grab some uh, DDR memory and we're going to go ahead and fire this thing up. I don't know what I'm going to get it from or how much, but I'm gonna grab some RAM, cause uh, screw it. And then uh, maybe afterwards we'll play around with this thing, but I'm not too interested in that. I'm mostly interested in this thing over here to see what's on that mystery hard drive I just found in the case that was disconnected. All right, I found a stick of PC2100, 512 megabyte. So let's go ahead and give that a try and we'll see how this thing boots. All right, so I've gone ahead and I plugged in the hard drive. I have no idea what hard drive is in there. It's going to be a mystery to me. I found a 512 meg stick of DDR. So we're going to go ahead and uh, flip the switch. And uh, let's give it another go. Let's see if it boots up. I have no idea if that RAM is any good. 
I guess we'll find out. Oh shit, it is. Dell into the setup. Ooh, we made it. The CMOS battery's dead anyway. Okay, we went back to 1999, no surprise there. It's still not picking the hard drive up. So I'm gonna have to check the, or no, is that, that is the hard drive, duh, I'm an idiot. It's a 40 gig hard drive. Okay, it's got a floppy drive. For some reason the CD drive's not being detected, but I'm not too worried about that for this test. Ooh, I device detection. Fancy, okay. Uh, otherwise this is basically just a fancy fancy BIOS for a AMD socket A board, presumably. So let's go ahead and save and exit, and let's uh, see if anything is on this thing's hard drive. It is loud as hell, that CPU fan. <laughs> very, very loud. Oh, it's booting. What's it got on it? All right, we all got Windows XP. I'm actually kind of surprised there's something on the hard drive. I would have figured they would have uh, blanked it out if they had disconnected it at least. Would have thought they would have done at least something to figure that out. Very interesting. All right, well, we're gonna let this boot up and I will come back because I don't know if this has got anything school related on it or not. Good God, that is one very blurry VGA output and I can tell that just based on the mouse cursor. It looks so blurry. Let's do an auto. Aha. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> they did not wipe this thing. <laughs> that is hilarious. I almost wonder what the uh, the hint on that password would be, but for right now, I think what we're gonna do, we're just gonna log in. The date, or the time or date on your system is invalid. Please use the date or time applet in the control panel to properly set your system date and time. Yeah, I know that. We'll do that when we get into the operating system. Oh, this thing took even longer to start up than that HP did, and that's surprising. But, I guess at the same time, what did you expect for Socket A? I'm presuming that this is Socket A. I could be completely wrong, but that's, uh, that CPU cooler completely looked like Socket A. And this is interesting. Okay. <laughs> oh no. AVG 2013. Oh no. Are they really updating it that long? Oh my god. Then again, this thing probably hasn't been used ever since I was there. I guarantee you they retired this thing after 2014 because that's when uh, Windows XP went out of support. And I was in 8th grade when that happened was when Windows XP went out of support. And <laughs> funniest thing, um, as soon as uh, Windows XP went out of support, there was a teacher computer in our classroom that was running Windows XP, by the way. Uh, it was an old Dimension 2400, I believe it was. And they were using that to look up assignments with Internet Explorer 8 in 2014. I'm not even kidding you. That's how amateurish of a computer user they were. And uh, when Windows XP went out of support, or just before, they had replaced the computer with, guess what? An HP Media Center PC from probably 2007 with uh, Windows Vista Home Premium on it. <laughs> they didn't even update it. So... Well, I mean, they were running Internet Explorer 9, so that would have been on at least Service Pack 2, but, you know, they didn't even bother to try to do anything with it. It was just like an off-the-shelf computer. What is it with these things and not having their firewalls turned on? My goodness. Is it just really that slow to boot up and Windows just detects that all of a sudden? I really couldn't tell you. Either way, this is taking an absolute eternity to boot up, as per usual. So I'm actually kind of glad I found the 512 megabyte memory stick that I did. Oh, no, what's this? Uh, it's probably an expired antivirus license, which doesn't surprise me. Oh no, your AVG protection is going to expire. You have zero days of your protection remaining. Well, I'd love to click on you if you'd give me my damn mouse. That'd be really nice of you to do that. <sighs> uh, can we just alt F4 out of this? Okay, we can. Yay, PS2 keyboard to the rescue. <laughs> oh, what do you know? USB human interface device. Yeah, I like that kind. Might need that. <laughs> I might need my mouse to uh, control this computer. All right, enough of the sarcasm. I'm gonna come back when this thing's fully booted up. Holy mother of Christ. Whoever was last using this thing was using the Windows Live Mail from like 2010. Are you kidding me? Who was using this for email? This is a student account. I don't really know why that would be the thing that they'd be using that for. 
Well, I guess you learn something new every day. Let's see what CP was in this thing. I'm legit curious. Oh no, I guessed correctly. It is a socket A. <laughs> Did I call that one or what? <laughs> Athlon XP 1700 plus at 1.46 gigahertz. And they were using this thing up until 2014. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? They were literally... <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I have to, I have to like chuckle in laughter for a minute. That's, um, that's amazing. That is just flat out amazing. Doesn't surprise me, but that's just, that's just flat out amazing. <laughs> uh, of course, we're gonna get the obligatory, you do not have sufficient security privileges to uninstall device or to change device properties or device drivers message before we enter device manager. S3 Graphics Pro Savage DDR. That sounds exactly like the graphics that are in my Compact Presario S4020WM. I guarantee that's exactly what they have in them. It's got a graphics driver from March 2nd of 2004. Bet you that's like 32 megs of video memory. Haha, -ha, I called that one. 32 megabytes. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm like legit curious now. Uh, what is left on this thing? It's got Uniblue Power Suite of some kind. Yuck. Uh, it's got Silver Light. Also, yuck on an Athlon XP. I don't know why you do that. Interestingly, it's got Encarta 2006. I wonder what they were using that for. Probably some Christian related item. Otherwise, it's just your basic uh, PowerPoint Viewer 2007, yada, 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 AVGs in there. So, just, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and point the camera away because I actually want to see what's on this thing as far as documents are concerned. I'm not sure if there's anything actually left. And oh, no. Oh, no. All the assignments are left on this thing. God damn it. Who the hell was in this IT department? They didn't even bother to wipe the hard drive. Are you kidding me? Ah, oh, no. And you know what the irony is? I actually know some of the names on these documents. I'm not even kidding you. Oh my god. Are you kidding me? This is literally stuff still on the hard drive. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera off. Because I'm gonna kind of reminisce about this stuff a little bit. Well, somebody was trying to do something, and then somebody just came along and just barfed on the keyboard. <laughs> the hot pink background. <laughs> oh, man. God. That perfectly sums up this picture. Look at all the K's in that thing. My goodness. Somebody's dinking around in MS Paint made somebody's face. Oh, lordy. <laughs> Oh, no. Is there any music on this thing? Oh, no music, damn it. I was hoping that there'd be something. Well, that was uh, fun and a half. Um, let's go ahead and log off. I wonder what the... Um, I remember I had a... Um, I had a one of the laptops, and I managed to crack the admin password because I was bored one day in class. I almost wonder... What's the hint? He died on... Oh no, is this what I think it is? Oh, Jesus. Did I just get that correct? <laughs> oh my God! How the hell did I do that? Oh, no. That, wasn't, that was too easy. That was too easy. Oh no. <laughs> oh my God. People. If you're going to throw out your computer, please wipe your hard drives. <laughs> oh my god. That was almost too easy. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, I've had my five minutes of laughter. Let's go ahead and... Uh... I'm actually kind of legit curious what's on the admin account here. Ah, nothing is on it. Well, these guys are losers. They're the admins. Kids got the cool stuff. Nah, I'm only kidding. All right, well, that was uh, fun. <laughs> oh, that is hilarious. I mean, it once it gets booted up, it doesn't seem to be too terribly slow. Because, I mean, XP on 512 megs of memory isn't too terribly bad. But, oh my goodness, that, that was... Uh, <laughs> 
that was certainly a trip. So, okay, well that wraps up this. I'm gonna probably, just for the sake of off-camera testing, I'm probably gonna go throw that, eh, get out of here, Windows search. I'm probably gonna go throw that RAM into that eight, uh, IBM Net Vista, and I'm gonna see if maybe we can uh, power that thing on. It's not gonna boot into anything, of course, because there's no hard drive, because obviously here's the uh, mounting things for that. But at least probably check the BIOS to see what kind of CPU it has, if it even tells me that. I don't know if it will or not, but I'm gonna do that off camera. So of course, unless I find anything interesting, I'm gonna go ahead and say that's the end of the video. So I appreciate you all coming to watch and do expect in the future that there is a video on this HP 522C and its recovery partition. I'm probably gonna start working on that after this video because I wanna get that going because I saw somebody in the Discord who was interested in wanting to see that, of course, obligatory Patrick uh, kind of opinion here. Anyway, that's it for now. So I'll catch you all in the next one.